Also, thank you uh, for inviting me. I'm not going to repeat for a week, but it's it's very interesting to be in this very interesting place of the world, I have to say. Anyway, um, Vic mentioned something about old school new media. I have to say I'm uh, even old school old school because I'm going to talk not about online but offline. Uh, community, so it's completely uh, old school, uh, and I do it also a little bit in a more maybe uh, boring academic way. But uh, you can always interrupt me uh, while I'm doing. Uh, it's based on research what I've done uh, most of the time about community art, so offline community projects of artists uh, in the Netherlands, the UK, uh, some in the United States, uh, even one in. Uh, uh, in Seoul, and I, I just will talk a little bit about uh, the conclusions uh, about uh, of this research, and I think you can see also. Uh, I think uh, certainly the problems we we discovered about community art that they are or can be related sometimes with problems also with communities which raise on uh, uh, on the internet. Uh, around or with art. But first of all, uh, yeah, it works. Um, I promised myself this year to uh, dedicate every lecture to Mark Fisher. Uh, I worked a lot with Mark Fisher. He uh, has written for several books I made uh, and he uh, committed suicide uh, January 13th of this year. So I promised myself uh, uh, to dedicate every lecture this year for him, uh, and I can recommend two books, uh, Capitalist Realism, very well known, I think, but a beautiful one is, and this is also really much more sensitive related to his own personal life, is Ghost of My Life, and in this book he describes very beautiful how the soundscape of a city, and he means the city of London, can make you depressive. It's an amazing uh, Anyway, he's of great influence of uh, my work. But I said I do more boring stuff, so let's start with uh, community art and analyzing uh, of it. I came, became interested um, at community art and very curious and also very skeptical, I have to say, by looking at uh, a work that was a documentary made on the Belgian uh, television canvas about an artist who's called Benjamin van Dook. It's a Belgian artist, you don't probably don't know, it doesn't matter, but it is uh, an artist who does or did at that moment in 2011 a project what's called Calendar in the city of Antwerp, where I live, uh, which is documented very well, where he did interventions with the city, also sometimes community art like things and other ones. But I start with this, what was for me very interesting. Uh, in this documentary, which was quite open, I think, or, or honest in what they showed in the documentary about this project. And it started with an illegal immigrant, a uh, refugee, who was involved with the project of Benjamin Verdonk, and who uh, really criticized him uh, because what he did with him in this project. And this made me very curious. What is it about this community art? Uh, etc. What was the project about? Benjamin built this kind of cardboard houses, put them everywhere in the city of Antwerp with slogans on it like uh, it was related with uh, uh, around them he invited refugees, illegals, which was very political at that time with 21% uh, of the Flemish Antwerp people uh, voting extreme right. And he was uh, doing this with illegal immigrants uh, to uh, claim for more enthusiasm, let's say, sympathy uh, for the situation. And on those uh, cardboard houses were uh, slogans like Nokia connecting people, uh, my home is where my Stella is, Stella is Belgian beer. Uh, so it, it was this kind of irony, of course, but at the same time, it, yeah, he really wanted that a serious problematic uh, thing, and he fought for those, the rights for those uh, uh, illegals. 
the illegals hold pamphlets and uh, a lot of illegals uh, give them in shopping streets uh, to uh, uh, consumers uh, in a kind of childish handwriting in which he also claims the rights for those uh, uh, illegals. What is this illegal immigrant saying about this pamphlet? I'm not taking it seriously in this artistic uh, uh, project. And the response also in the documentary, that's why I like it, it's quite honest, of the artist Fabian himself is, yes, he said, but uh, this pamphlet, uh, the, 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 the illegal immigrant said, uh, I'm not taking it seriously because this pamphlet is written in a kind of child, uh, childish handwriting. And that is the response of Fabian. Yes, but this childlike form is part of my artistic style. And then the whole discussion, of course, started, but it made me also uh, very curious. So I was just wondering, what is happening here, in fact? I see a kind of confrontation between an artistic style and a serious social claim, or political claim, uh, even a serious uh, political matter. And then you get immediately in this that kind of discussion, is the artist an artist, or is he an activist? Is it, what is he doing? Is it artistic work or is it social work? Um, is he involved in the art world or does he want to be also involved uh, in the political world? His answer was this childish handwriting to keep him, of course, as a professional artist, legitimized in the artistic world. That was his, to be uh, legitimized also as an artistic uh, autonomous. Uh, artist. And this is a, a discussion that comes back again and again when you look at, at, at this community art. So I was questioning more and more what this kind of art is this for Donk uh, uh, making in the first place and how can we understand then this community art uh, uh, better. So I tried to, after that uh, experience, I tried to make a kind of mapping of community art projects, community artists, and their strategies, what they uh, were doing. But before doing that, of course, I did a little bit theoretical research of what is going on, where does this community art come from, etc. The first thing I stepped into, or which I, I saw, is this book, what probably a lot of you know, is of uh, Nicolas Borrio, it's also a curator, theorician, uh, who has written this book, uh, uh, relational aesthetics, uh, aesthetic uh, relational, in which I saw in the 90s uh, a first, I have to say, rediscovering of uh, a kind of um, other way of working of artists which want to make more uh, work with people or at least want to have a communication with people. Of course, when you look further, it's very interesting, of course, and that's also what you know, community art is not raised in the 90s, it was already booming in the 60s, but then it's very interesting. In fact, it was already boomed, I discovered, in the 1930s in the United States, and it was invented by Roosevelt in the New Deal politics. So there is always, and this is very interesting, there is always a link between this popping up community art and official policy about it. Uh, are politicians who want to engage artists in social work or social communing and try to subsidize uh, it. And it comes back and back uh, again. Anyway, I think the word relational, as uh, Nicolas Borio used it, is not so functional in that sense i think every work is relational when you have no relation with the work of art uh, it doesn't work uh, but anyway i, I build it further on this to make a kind of mapping uh, of of, uh, of this research and i was thinking yeah when Fredonk is making relational uh, work then it is what i called with a dirty word or, or an awful word auto relational work what the, what do i mean by this he makes projects uh, art projects, but at the end, for example, of this project, he made a huge exhibition in the Museum of Contemporary Art. All the work that he has done, all the projects I've done, are 
back referring to the artist. So in fact, with this community art projects, he's building up his own career. It's all a verdonk what he makes. That's, that's the main thing. So the question was for me, is there then also something kind of relational arts where it's referring to others? Uh, and which really gets involved. And when you do historical research, you immediately come to the, the French or the Paris situationists uh, who did this. Uh, they try to also intervene in cities. But what we see is also very interesting. In a way, they, at the end of the 60s, they dissolved. They were not artists anymore at all. They became uh, pol political activists uh, in general. So the art killed itself in this process. And that's also what I call allo, allo, uh, relational in that sense. The artist, at, at least the artist as an author, disappears in this, in this kind of uh, uh, process. And we see this a lot uh, in, the, in the 70s already, in identity politics, a lot of outer globalist feminist movements also use theater, art, uh, visuals to uh, uh, get a political movement, but it's not about there as an individual artist, it's much more about what the movement uh, stands for. Also, uh, the gay pride, how it started in the beginning, uh, in the 80s, in, in Berlin, was at that moment uh, an example. So question is then, of course, when you look at the situations, look are very political, etc., uh, does this also this kind of anarchistic uh, thing to interrupting uh, spaces? Looking at walls, as Vic also mentioned, I think it's very important uh, uh, what they did. But the question then is, of course, is all this kind of art subversive, what they make? And in fact, when you look deeper, it is not. Uh, there's a beautiful article of Jan Cohen Cruz, who uh, is a self mentioned community artist, expert, and specialist. And she calls even the Nuremberg Party Relics of, uh, of Adolf Hitler community art. And indeed, there is a community dancing, and they, say they are celebrating their own community in a political uh, sense. So, in that sense, community art is certainly not always. Uh, uh, subversive, it can be very conservative or at least affirming the own cultural conditions and the own cultural and social order in which people uh, are living and not so racist, fake, fascistic as, as uh, uh, was happening in London. A lot of folk art nowadays still is doing. When you speak with Dutch clock dancers, we did for the research and interview when we uh, speak, uh, speak with uh, Tiroler dancers, etc. What they do is in fact nothing wrong. They're talking also a lot about quality, but that's all, uh, and quality of the art they make even, but it is all about gathering, coming together, and the social is the most important, but they also, in their work, confirm their own uh, lifestyle. And that's why I call it like to drink a digestive, it's digestive art. What do I mean by this? They don't question the social order in which they are living, they are just confirming the values, the rules, uh, etc., which are in this uh, society. So when you cross this, then, uh, those two oppositions, allo relational, auto relational, uh, digestive, and, and subversive, you get a kind of academic scheme and a mapping. You can also call it a, a, a wine rose almost of, of uh, different positions uh, you have uh, in this field. So you have the digestive form who confirms the social order or a community. You have, to, you have the subversive form who tries to interrupt, uh, try to uh, make another culture, do other proposals. You have the artist still auto-relational who only is referring to himself to build up a career and uses these communities to do this. Or you have the artist or artists who completely disappear in what they're doing and they put the community uh, at first uh, place. So, here you can put this work of Benjamin Verdon, but also the context is very important. This is in the gallery afterwards. 
in which a lot of people uh, went also to the show of, of uh, uh, Verdonk and they said, oh yeah, it's so worse with the refugees, oh, it's happening here. So but in fact, they were confirmed in their own uh, already value system, uh, etc. And certainly auto-relational, uh, this is a by the way commercial salary, they were, uh, were sent for a good price afterwards. What is our relational is uh, art in prison, for example. This is not about the artist himself, but it's doing art with, in this case, prisoners. It's certainly not subversive. What they try to do, of course, with this art is try to integrate, again, people in society so they don't question the social order uh, or even the economical order often. Uh, they try to, in fact, integrate them back in, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, social order. This is the best paid uh, art subsidized uh, in California, in the United States. And so, not art, yeah, of course, Trump completely finished it now, uh, the subsidizing of art. But the most paid, best paid art is this kind of uh, uh, social engaged uh, uh, community art, which says also something about a lot of artists, and I don't say all who are involved in those projects are a lot of artists who are searching for money. And they do this, especially I know from the Netherlands, because the government gives much more money for this kind of projects than real autonomous uh, uh, art projects. Okay, autorelational is again Benjamin Verdonk. I, I, so I don't say, I want, don't want to fix one artist in one place. It depends on which on which uh, project you did, they did. This was a very subversive project of him, in which he, uh, uh, it's in Dutch, sorry, it's illegals versus legals standing there, so they are playing football uh, uh, in, the, in the place, and it was highly uh, controversial, it was on all, all television stations afterwards, because he made a really kind of uh, subversive statement about how we deal with our uh, immigrants, or illegals at least. Uh, in a city uh, uh, like Antwerp. So it really depends on the context where you do such a thing, how you, uh, uh, um, how you can frame it. The uh, last one, I have to say very well, my favorite ones at the moment, this is Risetas Urbanas in, in Spain, uh, based in Sevilla. They are art, it's an artist art collective, and they build houses where people want them to have, or schools even, this is a school, uh, uh, they build them where people ask them where it's necessary. But most of the time it's completely illegal because it's not allowed by the government at that spot, etc. And then you get this kind of constructions that explains also the aesthetics of it. It looks mobile, it needs to be looking mobile, and that's a theoretical technical uh, thing. I can talk more about them, but for me it's very interesting how they move and make a very important shift, I think, in what we call uh, or can call community art. It goes more and more, and I come to this in my lights, uh, last slide, to what I call art of the commons. And I, I, I make a very important shift uh, uh, for that. But what they do is also very interesting. They negotiate a lot with lawyers. So they don't work as artists autonomous. They have to negotiate a lot. They have to fight to do what they do uh, with politicians, etc. So they are a very heterogeneous network. They even have a European network who uh, um, give them the materials for free or cheap. They have a whole network builder, but also juridical advice for what they do uh, at some spaces. So for me, it's, it's interesting uh, uh, what they do. But anyway, this is for me also the mapping, the kinds of community art uh, you see at least offline uh, in this uh, stream. Anyway, for me, very important was the discussion which we made also in this book, Community Art. Um, and I think it's a discussion for a lot of things maybe are also relevant, I think, for online uh, community art or online communities. One critique and discussion is very interesting, we recognized immediately when we did the research is 
uh, critique, not of uh, me, it's articulated for the first time by BAFO, it's an auto autonomous Belgian uh, research group, and they talk about uh, this kind of art as what they call NGO art. And what they do, what they mean by this is, uh, they say this kind of art can only function when they uh, operate as an NGO. And what does an NGO does, in their words at least, uh, they can only be um, functioning when they are pragmatic and when they have no political opinion. Of course they can have a political opinion, but they have to keep it for itself, because otherwise they cannot function like the Red Cross, for example, uh, on the spot. They cannot take a party. Uh, that's very important. So the denial of politics is very important in being operational. A lot of community art is about this. We saw literally community artists who started a program in a kind of suburb, etc. And they were financed by local politicians or, or uh, mostly bureaucrats. When they saw that the problems in the suburb were of a political kind, for example, private public uh, uh, corporation, which was the origin of violence in the streets at night, and when they start to point at this, immediately the money was putting out. Because they are afraid of that. So this is, this, this you really see, and this is very much a problem of a lot of uh, community arts. Second thing uh, is very interesting also, and I come back to this documentary about uh, Verdonk. This documentary started with a meeting like this, wherein Verdonk in front is speaking of all the projects, sometimes subversive projects, he's going to do the next year in the city of Antwerp. There were a lot of people, cultural professionals of museums, etc., sitting there, but who was also there was the mayor of Antwerp at that moment. And you see him also for the camera coming from at the end of the meeting and say, Oh, you're going to criticize our policy. Well done, Benjamin Verdon. So you see this whole kind of idea is that it is tolerated because it has a kind of carnivalesque ventile function or something like that. Uh, 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 in society. What we also recognized, and that was after we made this book, we were only, uh, uh, we were invited to present this book all over the world, but most of the time in very die-hard neoliberal regimes. In uh, um, Korea we were interviewed, and you know which part of Korea I mean, we were inv uh, 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 invited in the United States, UK, 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 uh, uh, several times, the Netherlands, the Netherlands, the Netherlands, uh, uh, again. And you see there is a lot of community art going on, and it is also often financed by the government. And there we saw that, uh, literally in the Netherlands, that in places, suburbs, for example, where the welfare state is broken down. For example, a local medical center or a local school, they put it away, they centralized it in one spot. There uh, starts to be a kind of black hole in the social system, and 10 years later, they invite artists to solve the problem. They do a short projects, very cheap, half a year, maybe a year, and then they are away again. And that's the huge problem with it. So they, they are used often in a very naive sense uh, as an excuse uh, uh, in this system uh, to solve the problems which politicians in the past really shaped themselves. Uh, and this is the whole discussion where a lot of artists also had ethical problems with when we, uh, when we uh, interviewed them. The last thing has to do with methodology critique. Uh, it's very strange when we talked about uh, or asked artists what they did in a community art project, etc. And always, almost came the same. They, for example, said, yes, we gave cameras to the people in the suburb that they could picture each other, or that they could film each other, or we gave the mics and, and such a thing that they can interview each other. But it's very strange thing when you look at it, what they do with it, because afterwards they put it, for example, in a public play or in an exhibition, etc. So what they were organizing these artists is in fact a kind of public confession. 
they let's see the backside of, or, or even in the room of the people, the privacy, what is happening there, in which worst conditions they are living, and they showing it uh, 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 in, in, in public, which let me thought very much at what Michel Foucault already called pastoral power. It is really uh, trying to look at what on, on the on the individual level, it's kind of micro politics looking at what our people are doing and then showing it uh, to the rest as the world uh, to the world as a kind of uh, uh, confession anyway uh, that were the critical remarks let's hope now uh, i try to make a step further and try to uh, this is the one but last slide uh, i know i don't know how my timing is but anyway lousy oh sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, I think nowadays more and more people learned from, also community artists in the 90s and uh, 2000s, learned from this whole discussion uh, that they only can be G NGO artists to be uh, pragmatic and they start to become more and more political, making political discussions uh, 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 in general. And that's what I call also uh, more and more they are interested in part of the commons. I know commons, commoning is a very fashionable word uh, nowadays, but what is interesting is that it has some principal things which are very different from community. When you look at community art, most of the community art is trying to build up a kind of harmony in a suburb. It tries to uh, and that's what it does, even when it doesn't intend to do this, it makes a feeling of the we again uh, in the group, singing together. A lot of community art is about this. Uh, and that's the opposite of what Commons is doing. So Commons is trying to do, or this commoning is trying to do, break it open again and again and again community. So bridging it also uh, 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 to others. And they use also strategies uh, uh, for for this. Uh, so what I see in this, and I immediately go there because I'm getting over time, uh, is, is how they do it is also very interesting, is not by pleasing people and drawing them together, but sometimes putting something very weird in a community or in a public space, a very singular thing, and they try to break it open by showing, like you said, for example, you can also make a school like this, let's fight for it, etc. And showing also what the political level uh, of it is. So what they do is, in fact, what I call building a minority democracy. What I mean by this is showing again and again from a singular position uh, uh, what is possible in society uh, and they put in making really minority and also minority claims visible. So it's not a majority politics, liberal rep representative democracy, it is really a minority politics. Uh, and what is interesting, of course, can be very dangerous minority politics, we know, but it is interesting because they do it again and again and again. Again, putting new proposals uh, uh, in uh, society. So, last slides, it's very brief. Uh, it starts already there, there, making your own space, I like this very much uh, um, because they define their own place, it's quite anarchistic I think, they do a true art, but look what, how, how they enjoy, they enjoy, look at their love, I think, I, this is fake when he was uh, six years, or four years old. Uh, but look what they did with the television, I like it very much, it's still playing. And they say, no, this is not us, we, are, uh, we, we claim this space. But it's what I call, of course, this, they don't know what they are doing, and I'm happy that it's not in my living room. But um, um, this is what I call democracy of, of the Soviets, and uh, to refer only one, uh, uh, it, it comes, this idea came up by me by reading again, um, on revolution of Hannah Arendt, in which she says, we lost in our revolutions a new enormous treasure and of democracy. And she says, what we saw in whole uh, revolutions is at the, at the end, we came up with a kind of political party system, representative voting uh, system, 
uh, also. Even, even Lenin did this by making the party and uh, in fact uh, only uh, delivering lip service to the Soviets by mentioning it the Soviet Union. But the Soviets in fact were really the people who popped up who uh, uh, everywhere and organized themselves, mostly workers but also heterogeneous group, uh, uh, really po uh, bottom up. But nobody, uh, also not in the French Revolution but the Paris Commune for example, before the French Revolution, they didn't know what to do with this. So they cannot deal with this kind of heterogeneous group which pops up again and again. And I think Art of the Commons is trying to do this, exactly. So giving people a voice, but also again and again, and making this kind of heterogeneous uh, uh, system uh, alive again and again. That's it. Sorry for...